Hello, welcome to Made with Switcher Live. I'm Haley Jester, social media manager at Switcher Studio. And I'm so excited for this live because we're talking about my favorite topic, which is social media. Um, this live stream is going to cover everything from the benefits of social media, how to stay inspired in making your content, how to find positivity in social media. And I, I'm so excited for our guest today. He is the creator of Happy Broadcast, which is an anxiety-free news outlet providing stories from around the world that benefit our mental health. Um, if you have any questions about anything that we are talking about or anything social media related, make sure to just put them in the comments and we'll be talking about those later. Um, so let me introduce our special guest, Caps in the comments for Mauro Gatti. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited. Very um, excited. I'm a huge fan of, of the Happy Broadcast. I was floating through all of your posts today. Um, for those who maybe aren't very familiar, can you tell us a little about yourself and Happy Broadcast? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I'm a, I'm Italian, so this is like, so if you're trying to pick up what, what my accent is from, you know, it's from Italy. Uh, so I moved to LA a few years ago. I'm a creative person, so I've always worked in the creative space. Um, but I'm also like an anxious person. So born with it, uh, uh, have it, you know, not ashamed uh, to say it. Uh, um, but, um, you know, at, at some point, you know, you, you have to go uh, to the root of your anxiety and try to find the things that are like considered like triggers of, of your anxiety. And I realized, especially when I moved here, um, that, that one of the main triggers was like being exposed uh, to the news constantly. You know, those like uh, fear mongering, you know, headlines uh, that we can uh, that we can see or it's not even that we intentionally want to see the news uh, uh, we're just bombarded by news um so i didn't want to be the person that like you know turn off the news completely and start ignoring what's happening in the world it's pretty dangerous decision um but i wanted to do something using my own talent which again is like uh being a creative person you know i love uh to do drawing so i was like how can i do this uh and i started like illustrating the good news so this is where the project started uh, um and you said anxiety free news and that is exactly the goal of the project when i started was to create like an outlet uh, like a place uh, uh that inspire positive change in people mental health uh, um, and not just stopping there, but also through, you know, sharing and highlighting the action of these amazing human beings all around the world that are like doing their part to change things, that also inspire us to do something because, you know, and going back to the anxiety, um, you know, the fear of not being able to change things because all the narrative around us is like, oh, the world is gonna end. This is like something that we cannot solve. We're doomed. Um, had this impact on our, you know, anxiety and have the effect of like paralyzing us. So, if you see someone around the world that is doing something, that is the right motivation for you to say it's not too late. I can do my part for as little as it can be. It's it's a great step towards like a a, a direction of change. Yeah, I love it. I'm, you know, as like a social media person, I always feel like social media sometimes gets a bad reputation of being really toxic, which it 100% can be, but it's, it can also be a place of positivity, of community, of togetherness. And I really feel like the happy broadcast kind of is an example of that. Um, so if you are just joining, I'm Haley Jester with Switcher Studio and we're with Mauro Gatti, um, creator of the Happy Broadcast. And we are talking about um, social media and creative content um, and kind of just diving right in. I was floating through your social media almost to your very first Instagram post. And one of the things that I, I just found so great was your branding is so consistent and so concise throughout the whole time that you have been been posting and and it's so visually inviting and fun 
how did you at first when you were thinking of happy broadcast kind of test out and build out this branding design that you have uh, yeah that's a that's a good question and uh i i feel like you know whenever i work on something you know my goal is not to create like a niche product but to speak uh, to a, a broad you know audience probably as broad as uh, as it can be so i've i've, I've done a lot of work uh, in children's books uh, so i always like the idea of working on a project that can be enjoyed by adults but it can also become like an educational tool for kids uh, and or you know kids to talk with their like grandparents about something so education is the foundation of this project that is start with me because before i post something of course i have to educate myself on the topic uh, and so it becomes like a great learning process that i hope uh, uh it, it transfers to you know um the the audience of the happy broadcast and so you know these were my initial thoughts uh, and so i decided to first use colors uh, like very busy colors but you know almost like a rainbow so you can see that the the i would say that the design foundation of that broadcast is like this gradient that is like a rainbow because uh, uh, it represents these like number of like different colors that I use uh, for different topics. Uh, so if you scroll the Instagram, uh, it's like this wall uh, with all these like color tiles. Um, and content is king, meaning that, you know, the drawing, uh, the illustration is the first thing that pop, uh, because again, I want something that speak even to people that cannot read. I'm talking to little kids, you know, if they see it, they might see something there. And then, you know, the text, uh, there is like a headline, uh, because of course you're constrained in a square in Instagram. So you have to be concise in that part, but that tells you what the news is about. And then of course you can expand uh, uh, you can go to our website, uh, read more. Um, and there are like, you know, the, the project grew from just a, just a social page now to, you know, something more. So when I talk about the place uh, that inspire people, um, my goal is to be honest, to have a like multi-channel approach uh, um, for this project where people can basically um, get their dose of like positivity pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I, I, I love following it. And you post a lot on Instagram, you post a lot of graphics. And you know, you have done a live video before on Facebook using Switcher Studio. Um, what made you want to try out a live video element to this? Um, I mean, uh, that that's a good question and you know as as an anxious person you know i don't like uh, uh even right now i'm like sweating and oh my I feel god you. why did i do it but uh uh but i love it because i mean i have to push myself and but i'm a, i'm very camera shy so what i love about when i use switcher is that my face is not there so i can basically broadcast uh, the thing that I love doing, which is like uh, uh, drawing stuff, uh, you know, so the whole process uh, is the part that I want to share, not specifically my face. Uh, um, but yeah, that's the reason why I, I feel like that, you know, broadcasting my process uh, 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 is, is helpful, not just to understand what, what's, goes into the making of a single broadcast but also it's interesting to see the thought process uh, um that goes into you know uh this this project yeah i i really enjoyed it um i also have anxiety so i feel you on even being in front of the camera <laughs> But I do, I love watching the tutorial videos and it's always just nice to kind of show like a behind the scenes element um, to what you are doing and creating with your social media. Um, so I thought that that was a really great idea. 
And I also, when I was scrolling through your Instagram, and I think this is something that a lot of people don't think about, you know, like they think posting, I, I need to post all the time and all those things, but posting, there's so much more to social media and you're so engaged in the comments uh, on your Instagram posts and all of those things. Um, you know, like how has the community that you've kind of built, you have over 5,000, 500,000 followers on Instagram kind of responded to the happy broadcast? Um, as a, I always like to say that, you know, I don't have any specific secret recipe that I, I wish because I will be, uh, rich or I could write a book about it, but I feel I that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that specifically for me, um, you know, one of the things that I like to say to, to the, the, the followers, friends is that you know a community means that you're not alone you know and 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 it takes a little bit from everybody to get something bigger going and if we all do something uh, uh we can all part we can all be part of a positive change so i've never wanted to build a, a community of like followers per se like i i still now i don't care about the numbers uh i want to build a community of like people that believe in the project so even if it's like a hundred people but they are all engaged it's better than have a million people that are just dropping a like and moving on with their day so part of this was like i just don't want to like drop like a good news in it because otherwise i would have started like a page where i post like animal videos just to you know give people like a quick you know dopamine rush uh, in their day and moving on and get a lot of likes uh, i want to you know trigger like a discussion sometimes you know some of these posts are like controversial sometimes they're like just uh, cheerful so it's a good balance of things but again when i talk about inspire collective action and change something uh, you know it also sometimes means to spend like half of a day going through the comments responding uh, trying to you know maybe even change my mind you know because I, i'm i'm not like a professor so i don't hold the truth in the world uh, so sometimes it's also like a, a learning process for me but i want to be involved as much as i can and i feel like that somehow people appreciated this you know strategy if you want to call it like this a social media strategy which is to be like uh participate on one side uh, and on the other side is also to be relevant or in the moment so talk about things that are even a little risque you know you might lose followers and sometimes with some of the posts that i did uh, because i have my own positions you know i'm a liberal person you know i have my own so uh i don't want to create like a, a vanilla profile like a hat that fits every head. I want to create a profile that speak to people about what I care about. And sometimes it comes at the cost of like losing followers, but other times it comes as a, as a good thing because you gain a lot of followers that didn't have an outlet to discuss a specific topic. Yeah, it makes total sense. And I think it's the way social media is happening right now. Um, I think you know, also more people being on their phones, there's thousands upon millions of profiles to follow and accounts to follow that you kind of just, you know, even the engagement part is so, so important. Um, it's more than just posting. It's, it's really like honing in. And like you said, having conversations and discussions. And that was one of my most favorite part about coming on at Switcher Studio, the community here is so collaborative. We have Facebook groups, which are 101 and Switcher enthusiasts, where everyone is sharing all of their ideas. We're always seeing comments. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're also kind of the same way. I'm not really focused on necessarily having the numbers, but having the right people who want to talk about what we do here at Switcher Studio. So I love that. Um, I think Ryan messaged me and said he has a comment that I hope makes you feel better. We appreciate you sharing your story, though, even though you have anxiety to come on camera. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i don't want to i don't want to seem rude you know it's not that i don't want it just that you know um all people have different kind of anxiety you know even yeah. there you cannot generalize and say oh there is one strain of anxiety and everyone has it it's very different and for me it's really like social anxiety so wherever i 
have to you know talk about myself i can write a book uh, without uh breaking a sweat uh, but if you put me in front of a camera i'm always like but i know that i have to do it because it's part of the uh it's part of the process where i'm bettering myself and i'm trying to even promote uh, the happy broadcast uh, as better as i can so yeah i mean i don't want to sound dramatic you know it's no, like, i'm exactly the exact it's fine way you know i'll i'll take a shower after yeah, <laughs> you know i saw my shirt right now yeah I, I wore a dark shirt and you can't see the rest of my body also i'm in like pajama shorts so there's that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the Please. one benefit of being virtual i can just wear whatever i want yeah that's true um so i'd love to talk a little bit when we talked um the other day we talked about just a few points even though like you said there's no and i 100 percent agree there is no recipe I i've been in social media for about nine years and every single but, but outside of just a company that i've worked with my friends you know consultants that i've worked with have always asked how do i get how do i go viral how do i become like a sensation overnight and i'm like there are really no rules to this but a lot of the points that you brought up are the things that i totally agree with um so i'd love to talk to you about them a little bit um and one of them was consistency um which i'd love to hear your your take on the consistency uh, first. yeah yeah i mean so everyone that really knows me you know uh you know know that i'm like a workhorse so i've, I've dedicated and i will keep dedicating my life to just using my passion which is like creativity to um you know produce something that might inspire someone else to do something to, to i don't know change something or better themselves or even just share like a moment of like joy and laughter with with uh, their loved ones um so you know when you build a or when you work on a project, not specifically, not even like a social uh, social media profile, uh, you have to put the work in, you know, because when you start, you're like a zero. And I know that there is always this expectation because there are a lot of like overnight successes, especially the people that really like record themselves, like dancing or doing this kind of stuff, which, you know, I'll be a total failure or maybe I'll be... Uh, <laughs> I'll be failing so much that, that, that that's going to be, you know, my secret to fame. But uh, when you do a project that creates content, uh, you know, consistency and quality is the key. Because, again, that's why I keep ignoring the numbers to a certain degree. At some point, of course, you have to understand, you know, what is the best time of the day to post something. You know, the algorithm has to be studied and accepted um but what i'm saying is that you know when you look at the work that i produced uh, you can see that you know i always try every year to maybe make the illustration better to give more information to create more collateral projects uh, uh, or extensions of the product so and that's like a lot of work especially for a project that is like totally pro bono you know because uh there's no advertising in the channel uh everything is like from me and the people uh that that is helping me and they're part of the happy broadcast uh, um but it, it's 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 a project a thousand percent you know you have to roll up your sleeve uh uh, stay focused, uh, and especially in the first year, do not bother, not be bothered too much about like uh, becoming like an overnight sensation, but just like creating uh, the, you know, amount of content that is needed for people to see what what is your project. So one post or two posts are not enough. You just need to have like 50, 60, 70, 100 yeah consistency is is so important we have a comment here that that it totally agree is it is hard to sometimes say consistent because there's consistency in how you're branding each content consistency in your posting schedule consistency in the message like the voice that you're using in your copy 
Um, do you use like a social calendar or anything like that to plan out? Or are you kind of like, since you're kind of going off of these stories, kind of like going as working as you go? Uh, not really. Uh, and this might surprise again, a lot of people. Uh, but again, I'm not the most uh, uh, organized person when it comes to social media, meaning that uh, I do not like create like 50 posts in advance. I plan them because like I said in the beginning, I really try to be current. So I really try to see what's going on in the world uh, and, you know, provide something that might be of relief uh, or might spark like a conversation. Um, so it's really like, you know, probably two hours from now, I'll work on the post for tomorrow. And uh, I'll probably finish it tonight and tomorrow morning at 6.15. I will just post publish and see how it goes. So uh, there are like things that I like to plan. So, um, you know, there is like the podcast, uh, you know, you have to plan it because right. it takes like more work than just me in my little room, you know, drawing news. Uh, um, or like I have these like collections of content where I talk about a topic uh, and I use like 10 slides. Uh, so I expand on a specific topic. Those of course require, uh, like right now I'm working on a food and anxiety collection that will talk about what food is good uh, if you're like an anxious person. So that requires, first of all, research, because that's the other point with the happy broadcast. I'm a big sucker for like science. Uh, so everything that I share has been you know, uh, it's hopefully unbiased, uh, fact-checked, uh, backed by research. Uh, so it's a good amount of time. But I mean, after like three years of doing this, it's like I'm not just happier, but I'm also smarter, I feel like, because <laughs> I've read so much uh, about everything that um, it's, it, it, again, it, it's part of the consistency process that i was saying before you know it will be so easy for me at some point to say oh i'm just gonna post videos of like cats right you know because i know that that will work uh, and i love cats and <laughs> my last name means cats uh, so translated so it's all about cats uh, but i just i just have to be consistent and go on with my plan even if i know that the other thing will be more successful in terms of shares and like uh, but that's just not what i want to do yeah it's all about what your your brand is and as, as long as you're staying consistent to what your your message is and and yeah i could imagine that it's it's a lot of like on the go um like you said, social media. Um, and I think a lot, you know, like even with our live streams that we do, sometimes these made with switchers are planned only like a week in advance and we're kind of promoting along those lines. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's, that makes total sense and is great. Um, and it does kind of lead into the next point you had, which is, you know, quality over quantity, which I also I'm a big believer in there's some social media out there that's just like I'm going to post all the time um, and that's fine um, but then you know you kind of you do start losing the the avid fans or the avid community who just wants to have like a positive conversation um, so yeah I loved this point of quality in your work yeah yeah it, it ties in on on what I was saying before um which is like, you know, first of all, you have to see how much you can do by yourself. You know, just like work too much to achieve impossible goals. I feel like it's part of the narrative sometimes to say, work yourself to the ground and you'll be successful. I've never believed in that. I know that you also have to take care of like your mental health, uh, the quality of your life. Uh, so I know the maximum amount of things that I can do. And that's why... I have so many, you know, projects for the happy broadcast, but I will just, or we will, with the people who are working with me, we will work on them once we have the resources. And because otherwise you're just like stressing yourself uh, or like starting things uh, that you cannot grow. And that's the worst feeling, you know, because you're putting so much energy into it, but you don't have the resources. Uh, and so you have to basically abandon something uh, that you know you nurture for a couple of months so 
what I'm doing right now is like I'm really, really focused on keeping the quality of the post, of the conversations. Of course, I, uh, you know, in, in the past months, we have launched a podcast, uh, a new website. We're working on an app. Uh, so we are like slowly, you know, expanding uh, uh, and consolidating uh, our goal uh it, as a multi-platform you know project uh, but um i'm a very patient person when it comes to work uh i've never believed again in uh, even the concept of virality for me is always like a foreign concept uh, because again i can become viral overnight but if i don't have a plan to sustain that virality it will be like a huge dip so for me, yes, the project at some point became viral because it went from like, I don't know. Yeah, very, uh, very quickly. 25,000, 30,000 to like 200,000 and then other bumps. Um, but again, I don't feel like, uh, you know, it just happened overnight for something specific that I did. I feel like that the quality of the project uh, and the, uh, let's call it unique selling proposition which is like uh, cute visuals uh, uh, positive concept uh, um you know stories from people it somehow resonated on a specific audience or more audiences around the world because the you know the the, the fan base uh, um is uh is not like located like specific in one country it's it, it's very international and and I feel like that, you know, that is probably like a good thing, you know. Yeah, I think with with really good social media content, it, it's a piece of content that provides value for your follower, for whoever is viewing it. Um, I think you hit that like multiple different ways because they're both visually appealing. You're learning something. You're getting, being educated. So all of your kind of notes hit hit within that. Um, and that's something we also try to do at Switcher. We're always trying to pay attention to what our community is talking about so that we can provide information and answer questions in, in our content. Um, and I feel like a lot of our creators are probably in that same kind of boat with wanting to promote you know, their live streams or their personal work that we're doing. Um, we have you know, people who run production companies to bakers, um, yeah. Zoe Cakes, I love Zoe Cakes. Um, you know, so it, it is just, it, the quality is really so much better. And then it goes, that all ties also into the consistency part. Um, the other thing that you, you mentioned during the call um, was finding your niche. Um, I think what you're doing with Happy Broadcast is so unique um, and definitely hits a point that everyone kind of needs in social media. I really hate when I'm scrolling through Facebook and everything's just so depressing and then you land on one positive thing and it really just it hooks you. You want to know what that is. Um, so how did you, and you talked about it a little bit, but maybe for people who joined in later, talk a little bit about what inspired you and how you found your, your niche with happy broadcast. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that the more genuine is the reason why you start the project, the better, is the perception of your followers about what you do because you're like you're like a real person you know you're talking about things that you know you're not just jumping uh, on the latest trend bandwagon and running with it without maybe even, you don't even know what you're talking about i mean in this case i'm talking about anxiety i'm talking about things that are like very dear to me so you know the the point is that you can decide to focus your time and energy on the bad things, you know. Um, but, you know, that will just lead to you feeling helpless. So my, my, my goal was like, I want to look at the stories of the amazing people that are doing something because maybe one day it could be me, you know, it could be you, it could be anyone else. And, and if one day even one person will say, Oh, I've seen this post about the happy broadcast about like recycling. I don't know. And I wasn't doing it before and now I'm doing it. Uh, that to me will be like the reason why I invested so much time, night, days uh, into this project. So, you know, my hope is always like that that niche will grow into the majority, you know, the yeah. people that didn't have like an outlet uh, 
to outside of the mainstream media, you know, to just feed on something positive, unbiased, uh, and interesting because a lot of the news that I share, I try to, you know, share something that didn't surface in the mainstream media, you know, because they have different logic. Of course, they have to sell advertising. So there are like a lot of like decision that goes into, it's not just that they're like evil, like a lot of people say, you know, it's a business and as a business, there are a lot of different components. Yeah. I'm not a business person now, so I have the freedom of like choosing and working on the stuff that I care about. And I hope to keep doing it for a long time. Um, so I feel like that I created like a place uh, for a lot of people that were like, uh, you know, sick and tired of what was like broadcasted in other places. And so they found this little corner uh, of like happiness uh, and action. Um, and again, that's where i focus my attention and with the hope that that like niche of people uh will just grow because one of the amazing thing about social media again is not the follow per se it's the share you know when i see that a post has been shared like uh, you know twelve thousand times thirteen thousand times twenty thousand times uh, it means that it touched you know that amount of people you know, um, and and I feel like that that's the power of social media. It's not just like sharing, um, you know, photos uh, of your life uh, per se, but also like information that can somehow resonate and influence others. Definitely. And now, you know, like you, you said you started mainly on social media and you now have this beautiful website, a book, a podcast, um, your newsletter. Um, how do you, you know, like incorporate them all the same? Um, yeah, that's, that, that's a good point because I feel like that that's like a constant challenge, you know, the, the consistency where we were talking before, you know, it's, it's very easy to drift away from your core original idea. Um, but, uh, I'm, a I'm a very fussy if you want when it comes to design or what i do because i love it so much uh, that i spend a lot of time um and with a lot of patience and without being in a hurry to grow a brand uh so for me when i started happy broadcast uh, um like i said before i've done like children's books and 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 and, and i love uh, like paper so i love uh like having like a physical uh, you know object that I can carry, put it on the coffee table, gift, uh, gift it as uh, to to my to my friends. So that's why when I started Happy Broad, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a book. So that was my first goal. And after like um, a year and a half, I had enough material to create the book. Uh, I have a I have it here. So, it, but this is just to tell that the consistency, you know, the rainbow, the title. Yeah. You can see the news inside and tips and stuff, but this is not to promote the book. But uh, so and after that, of course, you want the newsletter because there are a lot of people that are not on social media, but they will be interested in this kind of you know content. So I created a newsletter and the newsletter has like some original content, uh, but also the content that you can see on on social on social media. Uh, and then the podcast, you know, the podcast recently launched uh, and the podcast, I wanted to create something that was like a, a pill of positivity a week, uh, possibly even more in the future, maybe three times a week. Uh, but as of now, you know, you hear some good news, uh, uh, the story of an amazing person. Uh, there are like voices from the community. So we, we, we have opened like a website where people can just go there and record the message on what makes what makes them happy uh, and we just uh, broadcast it in the podcast uh, um, and then there are like tips um, er surrounding you know the theme of anxiety so like little tips to be less anxious uh, so as you can see there is this like this feel rouge that ties everything together and you know the app will launch soon and the app will be more focused on like you know anxiety controlling your anxiety 
build better habits. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a family, you know. It's like I'm I'm really trying to make sure that all the members of these families they talk to each other and they're like connected. Yeah, I love it. I I signed up for the newsletter, um, and if you haven't, you should because it really does brighten up the day. And I I think you've done such an incre- a great work with with the happy broadcast. I want to talk about the final point that you brought up, which made me giggle, but also I 100% agree. Um, is that social media is luck, uh, which I loved because you know there's like a lot of the things like you said that kind of go viral or have those things it's a hundred percent luck. it's it's lucky that that was a topic of conversation that day it was lucky that you posted at that time and just happened to see the people um so i i love i loved that point and i think it's something that a lot of people overlook um you know they'll they'll make a funny video of like make with a cat and not understand why it's not going viral and it's like well maybe you know it was two in the morning is not a good time yeah yeah um yeah it, it's it's it, it ties into what i was like saying before which is you know i'm always like i'm always reluctant on like creating these like or when i see things about like the 10 um points that you should follow if you want to fix your relationship or the 10 things that you should do to do this and the five points that things that you should do to fix that so for me, it's very hard because, you know, I can tell my story, you know, and, and to me, that's that's something that is important because I can share what I've done, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work for everybody. And I know um, because it's based on my experience, you know, I, 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 I have done a lot of things in my career um, and a lot of things failed and others succeeded and... Uh, you know, and you can see that the component uh, that is like constant on top of what we talked about, which is consistency, talent, and it's also luck, you know, and that's, uh, you know, the random, you know, factor, you know, because my point is like, if I had started the happy broadcast, like three months after when I started uh, three months later, who knows, maybe I would still be the profile with like 50,000 followers and, and that's it. So this is not to discourage people, of course, but it's just to say that, you know, you have to account uh, that into, and it's always like a, like an interesting aspect because it goes with everything in life. You know, you know, you need a little bit of luck to succeed. It's not just like talent. It's also the moment, you know, there are like inventions that like in a certain moment in history didn't mean anything. And, two years after that everyone wanted that specific product. So it's the window when you started things. So probably when I started, it was a good time. You know, it was the right time to start this and no one was doing this. Uh, to my uh, knowledge, no one is doing it even right now because it's so much, it's so much work. <laughs> You're either crazy like me or you do not embark into, you know, this journey. Uh, because it takes like a lot of time, you know, so. It does. Yeah. And this has all been great information. I think we have a few comments um, that we can pull up and answer some questions uh, from some of our viewers. Um, so Chelsea asks, hi, Mara, thanks for sharing your story. Which Switcher Studio feature has been a game changer for you? Um, probably more when you were doing uh, your live streams. Uh, I'm a, I'm a basic person so whenever i use like software i feel like i could still use photoshop uh the first version of photoshop because i use the basic so for me uh to to be honest the thing that i love the most about switcher and i, I mean probably this is the the least interesting feature i don't know but i love when i can trigger like the the titles with the animation you know that's the part that i love the most because it it makes me feel like uh, i'm the control room yeah those titles yeah, yeah. I'm pretty uh, sure Ryan enjoys that feature. As yeah, well. I, I just, I just, I just love, uh, I just love that that feature, and um, uh, I also like uh, because I've used it for like some interviews. Also, uh, I love the the whole like split screen, uh, and then the ability with like one tap uh, to be able to just remove, uh, you know, one stream and add, uh, you know, some animation. So it's very easy 
the control panel is very easy and, and intuitive, but I'm more like into those little, you know, funny, funny things. Yeah, I I actually used Switcher Studio at my my past job. I worked um, in for Broadway uh, for social media, um, and I was obsessed with the auto switch because I was running these live streams basically by myself because um, we had a very small team. It's Broadway, um, so yeah, I I, I fully uh, feel you there. Um, I think we have one more comment um, that we can pull up or question. And Jared asks, can you talk about the process for creating your podcast content? How do you determine what content you'll dot, 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 I'm sure, put up? Um, and this is really interesting because Facebook is also, um, in the summer, going to be launching Facebook podcasts. Uh, we have a lot of podcasters that use Switcher Studio for videoing um, their podcasts. So really awesome that you're, you're doing in the podcast world. Um, so um yeah yeah that, that's a that's a good question and again uh if i, I just want to clarify that i'm not the one reading uh, the the voice of the podcaster uh it will feel like a a bad episode of the sopranos if i would <laughs> like to you know narrating the podcast but there is like a uh there is a, a great you know podcast you know studio in it's in it's in dublin uh ireland it's called head stuff and so they take care of the podcast but what i do is basically i select the content uh, so i provide uh, the what are the what are the three stories uh, who's the awesome person of the week uh, what is the um, what is the mental health uh, you know tip uh, um and then of course they have like a writer that takes all my little notes and gibberish uh, and put it together and then you know they record like a they record the episode send it over if everything is good uh, it goes it's a very well oiled uh, and and streamlined uh, you know process uh, um and i only do it because of that reason because it wasn't you know adding too much uh work uh, to my current pipeline which is already like you know pretty crazy yeah i'll definitely check it out i love um you know podcasts that are in that realm like headspace and calm apps i'm there all the time yeah. um, so i think i did one actually before this live stream um yeah. yeah so i think that's just about a time thank you so much um for joining us today and and sharing your knowledge and sharing your story um, make sure to check out the happy broadcast on Instagram at the underscore happy underscore broadcast. Um, and you can also check out the happy broadcast.com. If you are not signed up for the newsletter, I 100% say you should. Um, it really just brings a warmth, uh, to your, to your week. Um, and definitely scroll through that Instagram account. Thank you so much. I mean, it was, uh, it was great. Yeah. I hope, uh, yeah. I I hope someone learned about the you know crazy story of the happy broadcast. Yeah, I'm excited to to keep watching and see see where you go with it. Um and just thank you all for for tuning in to this made with switcher. Um this series is all about our creators and sharing their stories and inspiring each other. Um so thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to participate in a made with switcher, um, take a behind the scene photo from your Switcher Studio uh, production and share it on social media with hashtag made with Switcher and I'll be stalking it and we'll probably engage with it and probably repost it. So make sure you do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.